Knives are cool, and I'm going to explain why. There are many reasons why knives are cool, in my opinion. Um, which include the collectability, functionality, um, and historical aspects, manufacturing materials. So I'm going to try and cover those subjects and these knives as much as I possibly can. So this probably will be a longish video, but um, if you're interested in knives, it'll probably this video should be interesting to you. And even if you're not interested in knives, you might learn something and understand why people like knives. And it's not because we want to go and stab everyone, because that's it could not be further from the truth. So speaking of stabbing, let's start off with this knife here. This is a KBAR USMC fighting utility knife. Why would you want a knife like this? A big, scary, intimidating knife like this. Truth of the matter is, it's not really big and scary and intimidating, it's just a knife. Like any other, you, you could use this for any knife task. Just because it's a military fighting knife does not mean you need to stab someone with this. Now, I'll talk a little bit about the history of this knife. Like I said, the manufacturer is K-Bar. These are manufactured in America, and I believe the, how they got their name, K-Bar, was a hunter uh, was out hunting, hunting with his rifle. And I believe he was approached by a bear after he ran out of ammunition. Now, I could be wrong, I might be forgetting, but he used an early version of one of K-Bar's knives. The K-Bar Mark I, I believe. Which could still be bought today. Uh, they still make that knife. And they basically used that knife to defend themselves against the bear. And uh, from that came Kill a Bear. Which then evolved to K-Bar. Can you see where I'm coming from? Now to me that is one reason why this knife is interesting. Another reason is K-Bar um, actually was spawned from Sheffield Cutlers, um, knife makers from Sheffield, England. Now to me that's another thing that makes K-Bar as a company interesting. And another thing is um, these knives are actually carried by the USMC or the US military or whatever. They, they actually do use this knife. This is used by American Marines. Now to me that's interesting. I mean, I think that'd be interesting to most people actually who have even the slightest interest in knives. But you never know. But even then, it doesn't need to be used as a military knife. I'm not in the military, I have no military experience, I have no intentions of join, joining the military. Equally, I have no intention of stabbing, fighting or otherwise harming another person with a knife. For me, this knife just sits in my, my uh, display cabinet, looking pretty. I personally quite like the materials, I'm quite a fan of leather, and this is a leather wrapped handle. And the leather sheath is quite nicely made as well, I think. While we're talking about Sheffield, let's talk about some knives here that I have that I've made in Sheffield. We'll start off with this one. This is an Arthur Wright and Sons. Nail breaker because it's very difficult to open. Sorry, give me a second here. An Arthur Rice and Son um, of Sheffield sheep's with pocket knife. Now, this company, Arthur Wright and Sons, um, their company history, I believe, goes back 300 years in Sheffield. And for a company to survive that long, in my opinion, is really interesting. This is the kind of knife that, um, at one time, everyone, every man and every boy, would have in their pocket for various tasks such as cutting fruit, um, opening letters, 
um, woodworking, you know, whittling, just little jobs like that. If you know, sharpening pencils, everyone would have had a knife like this. The same can be said about this. This is a J. Rogers of Sheffield in Barlow. This one here has a horn handle. The same applies to this. I think it has a a very long uh, company history as well and equally has the same use. This is one that I often used to cut fruit and to do the odd bit of whittling. This knife is even more interesting. It's also made in Sheffield. This knife is from the Second World War. This knife is dated, if I remember correctly, 1942. This was a soldier's knife. This is a knife that a soldier would have carried during the Second World War. In the field, in the trench, whatever. This was his knife. And technically when you think about it, he really needed this knife to survive. Not for combat or anything, this is not a combat knife, this is a utility knife. But for, you know, eating opening his foot, this, this is a can opener, um, he would have needed to use this knife to serve as his rifle. This is a screwdriver on the front here. This is this is a metal spike, this is for tying and untying knots. But like I said, th this is something that a soldier would have carried in the field during the Second World War. Who knows what kind of things this knife has seen. Um, to have years of service during the Second World War and still be around today for people like me to talk about on YouTube is pretty awesome I think now you can see it's kind of patinaed this is obviously high carbon because of how old it is, you know, it's over 70 years old not in the best of conditions not in the worst either you can still open it, it's just very difficult You can see how many times that blade has been sharpened and it's very dull at the moment. I see no need to sharpen it because I'm never going to use it. It just sits in my cabinet. Okay, this is a case knife. Like the other Sheffield made knives, well this one's been in America, not Sheffield, but like the Sheffield knives, everyone would have had these at one point. It would have been normal for 12 year old boys to have these in their pocket or as far as, I be, as far as I'm aware, have these in their pocket as they go to school. Not for fighting or anything like that, not for anything bad but for sharpening their pencils or pens or whatever. And here's a fun little fact. Case knives are owned by Zippo. Collecting Zippos is also another hobby of mine so to me that makes this even more interesting, although these are kind of expensive, which is why I only have the one. These are fifty-five pounds, I believe. They've gone up in price as well. Okay, let's talk a little bit Leatherman. This is the very first ever Leatherman. The Leatherman Tool Company was founded over thirty-five years ago by Timothy Leatherman, Tim Leatherman. He, his story is that he was always using his pocket knife to service his car, the screwdriver on his pocket knife. I believe it was something like this, some sort of scout knife. Or maybe even a Swiss Army knife, I can't quite remember. And his complaint was that it didn't have pliers. So he basically set out and invented the multi tool like this. These have knives, files, screwdrivers, saws, all sorts of things on them. And this evolved into something like this. And this. Quick 
quite a difference. If you visit Leatherman's website and click on, I think it's our story, you'll see exactly why I just told you and said you get the full the full details. Leatherman's are honestly great working tools. Everyone should carry a Leatherman. They're extremely useful. While we're talking about molly tools, let's talk about Victorinox. Victorinox is the maker of the Swiss Army knife. Another maker is Wenger, but Wenger or Wenger um, no longer makes knives, and I believe Victorinox bought Wenger anyway. So here's a small handful of examples of Victorinox. I think I've got over, I think I've got about 30 Victorinox knives. And there's a Swiss Army knife for everyone. You get them in all shapes, sizes and colours, and they're honestly beautiful knives. Yeah, they're so well made. Um, if Everyone who gets a Swiss Army knife basically falls in love with them. And it's easy to see why they're, they're so well made, they're affordable, they're extremely functional, and they're people friendly. Even people who don't like knives, they don't seem to mind Swiss Army knives. Even something like this might be too threatening to some people, but not a Swiss Army knife, because no one really sees a Swiss Army knife as a weapon. Swiss Army knives have many different functions. This is just a very basic model. I think this is the Spartan. It's either that or it's the Tourist, I can't quite remember. But most of them have two blades, a main blade and a small blade. Um, this also has a bottle opener and a screwdriver. and a can opener and a small screwdriver again everyone needs a swiss army knife also has corkscrew a reamer tweezers and toothpick this has a, almost everything on it this has a saw, magnifying glass, pair of pliers a file just all sorts of things on it you also get them with aluminium scales and these are probably some of the most collectible ones. People go nuts over these. And it's easy to see why because they're so beautifully made. They're such high quality made in Switzerland. This is the Victorinox Swiss tool. This is basically Victorinox's um, competition with Leatherman. Um, Victorinox is much older than Leatherman, I believe Victorinox was founded in 1890 something, I can't quite remember. And honestly the story behind Victorinox is just brilliant and fascinating. You can see that the Victorinox and Leatherman are very similar. In my opinion Victorinox is much better, much nicer than Leatherman. But they're both just work, both just workhorses of tools, they're just they're brilliant. These have so many different tools on them. Um, Victor like I said, Victorinox was founded in 18, I think it was 1891, but I'm not sure. Basically the Swiss, Swiss military, Swiss government needed um, a pocket knife that had obviously a blade on it. They also wanted a can opener, a screwdriver, the screwdriver was for servicing the rifle at the time, and a reamer all. There, there was something similar to this. Now, today the original Swiss Army knives will cost thousands to buy if you can come across them. They're, they're very expensive because they're, they're so collectible. Victorinox and Wenger has a massive fan base, including myself, because like I said, they're just brilliant knives. Um, the knife I just described to you there um, was the Victorinox Soldier, and the very first one. Winger also made that, but I don't have any Wingers. I am Victorinox. Vict Victorinox actually owns Winger now, and Winger no longer produces knives. But they also, both Victorinox and Winger produce luggage, fragrances, watches, and clothing. Also kitchen knives. I, I don't know if Winger produces kitchen knives, but Victorinox definitely do, and they're really good knives. Anything Victorinox screams quality, I can promise you that. Um, speaking of Victorinox soldier knives, 
this is the current issue soldier's knife. This is the knives that the Swiss government or the Swiss military give to its soldiers. It's not a fighting knife, it's a utility knife. So that's the blade, it's a locking knife. Now this one's very odd because most liner lock knives you have to press the lock that way. On this one you've got to push it that way. Now that's that's kind of interesting in and of itself because it's very unusual. I mean, are people in Switzerland mostly left-handed or something? This also has a screwdriver, a reamer, a can opener, screwdriver, and a wood saw. And it's a very, very, very well-made knife. Still. Victorinox, but they also do collectors and limited editions like this Victorinox Cadet in Violet. Even if you absolutely hate knives, you cannot disagree. That's absolutely beautiful. It's such a nice color. Um, this is the 2016 edition. A bit more expensive than normal. But they're so nice to have. They're very collectible. If you're interested in firearms, which I am, this knife may be interesting to you because this is a Glock. This is actually manufactured by Glock in Austria. This is, I think it's a 78. Yeah. The Glock 78 field knife. Now, if you're familiar with the Steyr AUG, or AUG, this is a bayonet for that rifle. So that makes it interesting. It being a Glock makes it interesting. Um, this is a field knife, this is a survival knife. It is a very tough knife. If you ever watch the instruction videos on this knife, this, this knife is solid and it's cheap. It's only £40. And it stands up to a lot of abuse. It's also a throwing knife. That was one of the specifications um, for this knife, was it could be thrown. Um, I believe it's made of spring steel. Um, most knives you shouldn't throw because they'll damage it, because you could easily snap it. So it needs to be designed to throw, otherwise you'll damage it. That's not the case for this. This is, of course, a military knife. This here is also a military knife, this is an Ontario um, United States Air Force Pilot's Survival Knife. The idea behind this knife is if you're piloting a plane in the US Air Force and for whatever reason you crash your plane, you would use this knife to dig you out of the plane. Um, because I believe that um, planes are made of aluminium and what you would do is you would stab this through the side of the plane and if you see that saw there, on the top, you would use that to saw your way out of the plane, and it's got a nice leather wrapped handle. Now, again, I believe these are also a very old design. I believe they also had these during the Second World War. This is this is a modern one, but still made by Ontario. This is a newly bought one. It's got a really nice leather sheath. This piece of metal here, the idea behind that is, while this is on your leg, if you have to eject from a plane and you land and um, well, you might end up stabbing, uh, stabbing your leg with it, which is why that piece of metal is in there, which is a very clever idea. The British Army Jingle Knife. I don't actually know if these have been issued to soldiers in the British Army. For what I've heard, they have been. I'm not entirely sure. You can actually see on this one it's actually got the, the government broad arrow. A beast of a knife. It's a very good bushcraft knife because it's so thick and heavy. This is a replica of a Hitler Youth knife. 
So again, it's another, it's a second World War replica. Now marketed as a scout knife, and it's actually manufactured by the original company, uh, Linder, in Germany. This is called the Sword Peasant, and this is, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's Japanese. Um, these are friction folders. Um, these are known as peasant knives for people back in the day who, who needed a working knife for working on a farm, but they couldn't afford anything better, which is why these are called peasant knives. To me, that's also interesting to hear the origins of these knives. And even today, these are good working knives. And I'm just going to finish off with the BK and TK bar. I'm not really sure if you can call this a knife, well, like a Jacques Parra bar, pry bar, but you could do almost everything with this. You could hack, you can chop, you could cut, you could slice, you can even hammer with this knife. You can pry. One of the stories I heard, um, I think it was by Ethan Becker, the designer, is that. Um, what was it? The uh, some uh, someone in law enforcement in the in the states uh, used this knife because the um, the police station was flooding or something like that, and um, they, they used this knife to pry open a cell door. And apparently, they actually managed to, to pry open the, the cell door with this knife. At the same time as the door opened, the blade snapped. Now, to me, that's impressive to open a cell door, even if the blade did snap. But you're, you're going to find it very difficult to break a knife like this, because it's absolutely solid. So, in conclusion, knives are interesting for well, all the reasons I've just stated. History, functionality, origins, materials, all, all these reasons. Fair enough if you don't like knives, but just be aware that people who collect knives like these are not the problem, and please try to understand why so many people do like knives, even if you don't. Okay, thank you for watching.